Good afternoon. This is Destin over at Camping World in beautiful, rainy Conway, New Hampshire. I'm going to do a quick walk around of the Kodiak Ultralight 242 RBSL, which is uh, a somewhat new floor plan, dinette slide on it, multiple seating areas, and a large rear bath. Um, kind of a popular layout, especially for a couple's coach, so let's dive right on in here. Power tongue jack at the front, manual override for it in case uh, in case you do have to uh, crank it up yourself. Two 20-pound LP tanks. You can upgrade to 30s if you so choose. And our spot for a battery right behind there. Uh, a true battery disconnect equipped on here, which will actually shut off everything on the coach. There shouldn't be any parasitic loss past that. And then on the front cap, uh, metal rock guard, and then a molded fiberglass front cap. There is LED lights on both ends for marker lights, so you can kind of see what you're doing if you pull in a little bit late. And let's go over to the door side here. So first things first, huge pass through, uh, aluminum frame on the coach, being an ultralight that's fairly standard, LED strip in the pass through so you can kind of see what you're doing. And what we're looking at here is uh, inverter prep as well as uh, solar control prep. So it's all wired and ready to take a full solar system, throw a panel on there, and uh, we'll get a bit more in depth as to how they prepped the inside for it as well. Um, outdoor grill uh, comes with the coach. There is a little spot to mount it for a, a makeshift outdoor kitchen here. Um, underneath there, power stabilizers on the front and rear of the camper. And then right by that, there's our, our quick connect for our outdoor grill here a little spot to mount it right there right underneath your awning which spans just about the full length of the rv uh, led strip underneath there so you do have some outside lighting and uh let's keep on going here so aluminum uh construction like i mentioned um all uh, the insulation wise they're using block foam throughout so it's uh, uh, essentially pretty much a yeti cooler rolling down the road uh, 110 power on the outside a cable out in case you do want to mount a tv out here and then your fresh water fill is going to be right next to that as well outdoor tv in case you choose to mount one there and there's our uh, axles and such like that aluminum wheels on here so they did upgrade them uh, standard 15 tires. Furnace exhaust is going to be right by there, as well as our rear uh, rear jacks and water heater access. On the back side, you do have a little spray port here, so you do have access to outdoor water. All the lights on the exterior, your brake lights and turn signals and such, are all LED now. Um, they look a little bit cleaner, looks more modern. Spare tire comes equipped on the camper. And we're on to the back side. 30 amp connection and all our water connections are going to be right here as well. So our uh, black tank flush as well as our city water. And underneath, just to give you a quick look, there's our sewer exit right there. It is just the single dump, so that's the only one you'll need to worry about. And then your gray and black poles are right next to that. Cable driven slide, tried and true. I mean, it's what uh, what a lot of the higher end brands are using now. And I think that's uh, most of the, the outside here. I think we can head on in and, uh, and go from there. We got the solid entry steps, pretty standard nowadays. And as we walk in, There's our layout. So we'll start off right in the slide here. We've got a oversized dinette. The table will break down to a bed if you need it. And then underneath here, a couple built-in drawers for storage underneath. So no need to pick up the, the cushion or anything like that. They're quite long as well. They go the full length of the dinette. Do we have a little recliner set up right next to that? So a couple cup holders in the center, little hidey hole. There is power next to this little side uh, side countertop here. 
so in case you do need to plug something in. The kitchen area gives you quite a bit of, nice little bit of counter space right here. You have the single bay farm style sink right next to that. And then the Furion three burner cooktop. A little oven underneath there. And this will flip up to a backsplash. Pretty standard nowadays, but it's nice to have a little bit of extra counter space. Greystone fan right above that, and the matching microwave to go with it. Storage-wise, up above, you got a really big top cabinet. I like the glass inlays that they did here. Underneath the oven, you got a pot and pan drawer. The sink will give you a spot for a little uh, uh, trash can. And then a few more full extensions right to the side here. All right, moving on down. Huge refrigerator here. I think it's like 13 cubic foot or something like that. About the size of my first apartment fridge. So a decent amount of space. Shouldn't run into an issue for food storage. Right underneath that's going to be the return for your heater. And we're into the restroom here. So, nice restroom setup. Medicine cabinets right there. You got your sink with plenty of counter space and outlet right next to that. Some good storage underneath the sink as well. Maybe deep storage for linens or something like that. And then as we turn around, you have your commode right there. And they, the way they angled it, it's kind of nice because you actually do have uh, uh, space to put your legs. It's not hanging in the shower like in, in some units that I've seen. And there's the glass door shower, uh, full-size shower as well, just to give you a little point of reference here. I know a lot of people are concerned shower, but there we go, head height. I'm six foot tall, there's plenty of space here. And then in the shower, I got enough room to, my elbows can kind of stretch out a little bit. So not a bad setup. Now moving on down the line, uh, one thing you'll notice is there's no heat vents in the floor that's going back to that block foam insulation I was talking about. Um, so you'll see it cut into uh, some of the woodworking and such like that. There's a vent there. I saw one in the restroom while we were in there. Um, just a, a bit better insulated and um, that's, that's why they do it that way. Easier to keep clean too. You're not going to have to do that. So onto the entertainment center here. Spot to mount a TV. You'll notice this is the same kind of mount that I was outside. So you want to throw the TV out there. It's nice and easy to. Underneath that, nice little hidey hole for remotes or something. And then the electric fireplace. Not enough to heat the whole thing, but good enough to take the edge off. And then for some more deep storage, there's the hidden pantry, quote unquote. So that goes pretty far deep. You can actually fit quite a bit back there. And then you mount your TV there, and you're good. All right, moving forward. I think that's about the, the back half here. You have your air conditioner right at the front here. Um, it's ducted throughout the whole camper, so every room's got its own vent. Should be enough to uh, uh, keep something of this size fairly cool. You have your control panel right next to that. So gas and electric hot water. Um, you do have your power awning. Of course, that's fairly standard now and then your tank monitoring and such like that. Into the bedroom, and I apologize, my battery pack's uh, losing its life here, so it's starting to get a bit dark. <coughs> Under bed storage, so it's uh, on struts quite a bit, uh, good for linens or something of the sort. The other half that we see is gonna be the, our pass-through and how we got the space for that. Good amount of walk-around space, so instead of having um, having it right next to the window I can actually get around here and speaking of windows both of those open you can get a cross breeze out of it spot to mount a TV on the wall right there and for the storage in the front let me give you an idea here both wardrobes are going to be ample uh, full-size wardrobes nice little hidey hole at the top there your traditional overhead and then behind the storage here, I don't know if you can quite see it, they give you this handy little 
cabinet right there. And then over on, man, it's getting quite dark here. Let me try something here. Okay. On, uh, on that back there, there is 110 power as well as USB power. So you can plug in your phone, little spot for a CPAP if you need it. Now, I've pointed out the, uh, the solar prep in here and kind of to delve into that a little bit more, there's a handful of outlets throughout the camper with these nice little yellow stickers on there that denote that they're inverter prepped. So if you are running off a solar panel, those outlets will run off solar or 12 volt. So you won't need 110 power to power them. And I think that's about it on the Kodiak. I think I hit about everything that was, uh, that was on my list. If I did end up forgetting something, don't hesitate, reach out, let me know. Leave a comment. Um, if you like the walkthroughs, definitely uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, hopefully this helps out. I'm at uh, 603-452-7291 to answer any more questions. Thank you much.